Hello, my name is Dr. Asley. I'm a board certified fellowship trained spine surgeon and I'm the medical director here in Spine Treatment Center. In this segment, we're talking about imaging, different techniques that we use to find out what's wrong and what's causing the patient's pain and discomfort. In this segment, we'll be talking about a CT scan, CAT scan, which stands for computerized tomography. The way it works is that the patient lies down in a tube and there is an x-ray beam that travels around the patient in that tube. And one side is the x-ray beam and on the other side is a sensor. As this goes around the patient, based on how much absorption the patients get, the computer actually reconstructs an image of the inside of the patient. Now, because it's x-ray based, with CT scan you can see bone very well, but you can't see the soft tissue very well, like vessels, nerves, uh, discs. You can see it a little bit, but not no, nowhere close to an MRI, which looks at the soft tissues. Now, this is an example of a CT scan. In this example, you can see what we call axial views, which is basically slices of the patient in a horizontal manner. For example, in this view, let's focus on this. This is the waist of the patient. So the legs are sticking out and the patient's body and head is directly on the other side, on the other room. You're looking from below up, therefore this is the right side, this is the left side. If I have to orient you on this segment, you can see that this is the vertebrae cross section. You can see this is the aorta. You can see the vessels coming out. These are the muscles, what we call paraspinal muscles. And this is the middle of the spinal canal and you can't see the nerves very well. But you can see the bone very well. So if you have a fracture or a tumor, you can see quite well. In this section, this is an example of axial, I'm sorry, sagittal views. A slice of the body like this, it's like cut you in half, you're looking from side on. You can see in this corner, the it's going from the middle of the patient with the slices going toward the left side. Now, if you can focus on this picture, you can see that these squares are the bones or vertebrae that are stacked up on top of each other. And these are the cushions. So you only see the discs as uh, shadows and you assume that they're there. You can see that this is L5, L4, three, two, one, and thoracic one, and this is second. In this example, for example, uh, for, for uh, review, you can see that this patient has a severe L5-S1 disc damage, bone on bone contact. And not only that, patient has a spondylolisthesis of L4 over L5, which is the slippage of one vertebrae over another. You can see it very clearly right here. Now, why the slippage happens? It could happen because of the degeneration in the disc. For example, if the disc loses its integrity and starts getting weak, then it settles and then the vertebrae above can slip. However, in this patient, if you focus on this image right here, you can see that in this section, there is a fracture. There is a pars defect. Normally, uh, you connect to vertebrae above and below to these facet joints in the back and discs up front. Now, if there's a fracture, that means the connection between this vertebrae and this vertebrae is only through the disc. The disc can go bad, there's too much pressure on it and the slippage happens. Now, this fracture or what we call spondylolysis, you will have a very difficult time to pick it up on the MRI but you actually can pick it up on the CT scan. Therefore, if I get an MRI and I see a slip and I want to know why it happened, then I will have to order an M a CT scan to make sure that the slippage is there because of the spondylolysis or a pars defect or not. And that's why we sometimes use different tests for different reasons. So overall, if I have to summarize everything, we use MRIs to look at the soft tissues, including nerves, discs, ligaments. And uh, that gives me about 90% of the information that I would like to know about the patient's back. And if I want to know something that I can't see in the end of MRIs very well, then I order either x-rays or a CT scan. Then I can look at the bony structures very well. For example, a 
um, pars defect, spondylolysis, which is the same thing, pars defect or spondylolysis, right here, or a facet arthrosis. I hope you enjoyed this segment and have a nice day.